Hey, how's it going everyone? Danny here, back with another video. So in this video, I wanted to talk about the recently released RX 470 that just hit the market. There are a few things that I actually want to talk about, which revolve around the RX 470. Obviously, I'll be going over its performance, its capability, and how it stacks up against its bigger brother, the RX 480. I'll also be discussing its pricing and availability, as there, are, there appears to be quite a considerable amount of fans wielding their pitchforks and re ready to start a riot. Yeah, but more on that later. The AMD RX 470 was unveiled at E3 2016 in June, along with the RX 460. The RX 470 is a cut down version of the Polaris 10 chip that is used in the 4 RX 480. It wasn't until later on July 29th where AMD had unveiled the full specs of the RX 470. So how does the younger brother compare to its bigger brother? So let's take a look at the specifications here. The RX 470 has 2048 stream processors, while the, its bigger brother the RX 480 has 2304. They're both based on the Polaris 10 architecture or the GCN 4.0, but uh, the 470 as I mentioned earlier is a cut down version while the 480 uses the full Polaris 10 chip. The manufacturing process is the 14 nanometer fin fat process that both of these chips are on. The RX 470 has a peak performance of 4.9 teraflops, while the RX 480 has 5.8 teraflops. Compute units, the RX 470 has 32, while the RX 480 has uh, 436 compute units. Texture units, the RX 470 has 128, and the RX 480 is boasting 144 units. They both have the same amount of ROPs at 32. The RX 470 has a core clock of 926 MHz and a boost clock of 1206 MHz, while the RX 480 has a core clock of 1120 MHz and a boost clock of 1266 MHz. The RX 470's memory is clocked at 6.6 .6 GHz, while the RX 480's memory is clocked at 8 GHz or 7 GHz depending on which variant you buy. They both have the same uh, memory bus bandwidth at 256 bits, and in terms of memory uh, bandwidth, the RX 470 uh, has a bandwidth of 211 gigabytes per second, while the RX 480 has 320 gigabytes per second or 224 gigabytes per second. Both of these cards come in 8 or 4 gigabyte variants, and the RX 470 is more efficient at 120 uh, watts TDP, while the RX 480 uh, has a TDP of 150 watts. So judging from that table here, you can see for yourselves that although the RX 470 is supposed to be a cut down version of the Polaris 10 chip, it's still relatively close in a few areas to the, Polaris, the full Polaris 10 chip that's used in the RX 480. So now that I've gone over and compared the specs, let's talk about some of the gaming benchmarks. I actually decided to include some of the benchmarks and tests that were conducted by the folks over at Guru3D because I found the results to be very interesting. They are great reviewers, and they have informative and detailed reviews of the different RX 470 variants. I'll actually have a link in the video description down below if you guys want to check them out for yourselves. Alright, so starting off with Rise of the Tomb Raider on DirectX 12, at 1080p you can see that the Radeon RX 470 managed to pull an astonishing 64fps average. That's just 6fps lower than the reference RX 480. With the resolution bumped up to 1440p, you can see that the RX 470 manages to attain an average FPS of 43, trailing behind the RX 480 by just 5 FPS. Rise of the Tomb Raider tells us that the 470's performance is relatively close to its full counterpart, but let's hold off on that thought and continue to look at some of these results. Moving on with Hitman 2016, Running on DirectX 12, we see similar results here. At 1080p, the 470 obtains an average frame rate of 70 FPS, and at 1440p, it pulls an average frame rate of 52 FPS. In both resolutions, the 470 is trailing right behind the 480 and even beats the GTX 1060 in both scenarios when the GTX 1060 is a card that costs more than 100 bucks than the uh, 470. Now keep in mind that this RX 470 is not a reference model, but is the MSI Gaming X Edition with MSI's custom tw twin frozer cooling. So I know that it's slightly higher uh, factory clock than the stock reference clocks. Now I'll just show you guys the rest of the results from some of the games that they had tested.
So now that you guys have seen the rest of the benchmarks, you can easily observe that across all the titles, the performance of the RX 470 is surprisingly close to the RX 480. The results we saw from the specification tables translated pretty much directly over to the performance in games. In some of the games, there was a difference of 5 FPS, and in some, the difference was as small as just 2 FPS. So what does this mean for the RX 470? Well, it's basically a very good card for its price. If you guys thought that the RX 480 delivered a good price to performance ratio, then the 470 will really please some of you. It takes it even one step further. And you know what? Seeing this kind of performance on a card that's supposed to be for budget tier or low end builds really is impressive and satisfying. Aside from that, seeing it performing this close to the RX 480 is interesting because I have no doubt in my mind that this card will cannibalize some of the RX 480's target audience. Honestly, I was very surprised to see this card performing this closely to the RX 480. With the RX 470 offering around 90% of the performance, it's dangerously close. I initially thought that it was probably going to be offering about 70% of the performance of the RX 480. Therefore, this will leave the market being left in a bizarre state. As I mentioned in another one of my videos, the low end, entry level, mid tier, whatever you guys want to call it, this audience is finally getting the right attention from GPU manufacturers. If you take a look at uh, surveys such as the Steam Hardware survey, majority of gamers are either playing at 1080p or below that. There aren't that many gamers out there that can play at 1440p, let alone 4K. One of those reasons is because it was simply too expensive. In my opinion, the sweet spot for gaming is still 1080p just because of how much affordable it is when compared to a 1440p setup. 1440p monitors are still significantly more expensive than 1080p monitors, especially up north here. However, something else I want to bring to your attention to further enforce what I said previously is in regards to the performance that was uh, available with last generation mid to low end cards. I'm referring to cards such as the GTX 960, the R9 270X, GTX 750 Ti's, R9 380's. Now previously, if someone was to recommend a budget or mainstream build for 1080p, and I'm talking about this, these builds being before Pascal and Polaris, those cards would be uh, recommended. Except the main issue I noticed with those builds was, uh, was that sometimes they were not up to the task to handle 1080p 60fps gaming with ultra or maxed settings. I mean, it would sometimes take a GTX 970 or an, even an R9 390 to fully handle 1080p gaming at 60fps with ultra, very high, or max settings. I'm not stretching this either. The numbers are all there, you guys can take a look and see what I'm talking about here. Going back to the results and taking a look at Rise of the Tomb Raider, the RX 370 at 1080p, very high detailed settings, manages an average frame rate of just 30fps. The same can also be seen with other titles as well. Now some people might be okay with that, but We're a PC master race, and we accept nothing below 60 FPS. Seriously though, jokes aside, the RX 470, which is the successor card, now finally offers performance above or at 60 FPS. That's double the performance of the card it's replacing from the previous generation. To put it simply short, with these lower end cards, AMD and Nvidia have de delivered high end level performance from the previous generation to the mainstream low end market, and I for one couldn't be happier. Now I keep mentioning mainstream, low end, and how the RX 470 offers a great price to performance ratio, but haven't even mentioned a price tag. When the RX 470's full specs were unveiled, along with all that, the MSRP of the card was informed to be 150 US dollars for the 4GB model and $180 US for the 8GB model. However, with the manufacturer's MSRP, retailers and partners take that figure as a suggested price. They don't have to strictly follow the MSRP. If they want, they can price the card lower or higher than that value. And well, what do you guys think ended up happening? Because of the RX 470's stock being so scarce and low, while trying to meet a really high demand, 
Retailers significantly marked up the price on this card to an absolutely disgusting level. The 4GB models of the 470 cost as much as the reference 8GB RX 480s. This varies from different retailers, at some places the markup actually isn't so bad, but still the card isn't priced appropriately. With the add-in board partners having their custom cards out already, and that was actually nice to see since we don't even have custom 480s yet in some places, you expect to see some kind of a markup, but the market is just in a really really weird condition right now. I mean, you could go picture yourself in a computer store right now, and just imagine yourself, you see an MSI Gaming X RX 470 priced at $200, but wait, you look further down the shelf and you see a reference RX 480 for the same price, which one do you go for? And I also want to mention uh, stock being very low, and that was mainly due to the mining community. People who do Ethereum mining, Bitcoin mining, crypto coins, or whatever you call them. The RX 470 seriously caught the attention of those folks, and the reason for that is because as I mentioned earlier, since the RX 470 performs decently close to the 480, miners are picking up this card instead of the 480. The difference in the hash rate isn't, isn't that big, so you get a card that performs almost just as good and consumes less power. Now I'm not a miner, but I do know that miners are quite conscious of the power usage. So now, not only is there a demand from the ever-growing PC gaming community, but now miners are after this card too, making it all the more difficult to pick up this card. It instantly goes out of stock, no joke. Retailers even have a one card person limit, but I've heard that this isn't really enforced and can be exploited quite easily. This is the reason why there is an angry mob or fanbase, blaming AMD for the lack of stock in production and retailers for their ridiculous markups. But you know what, in the end, crying or raging about it won't change anything. The best thing for you to do would be to simply just wait it out and let the storm pass. See how this plays out. After that, you should be able to get your hands on one of these cards fairly easily. Well guys, that's pretty much all the time I have for today. If you enjoyed this video and found it informative, then hit that like button. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. Will you guys be picking up an RX 470? And if you guys want to see more content like this, then hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for your time. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.